Hello everyone, this is Boricua Binks and welcome back to Let's Play in the Greatest Attorney Chronicles where we are continuing on in the fifth chapter, or fifth case of the game, The Adventure of the Unspeakable Story where we are now in the beginning of the trial. Alright, so since last time I did um, go back and re-listen to some of the voices that I did for these characters and I'm like, okay, I got it. I, I wasn't too far off. The trophy part is going to be that Von Zeeks has, I was giving him like almost like a German slash Russian accent and here I have an actual Russian character so their voices are going to sound too similar so now I'm like, well darn, I got to figure out what I'm going to do with that Russian guy. We'll see. Witnesses. State your names and occupations for the court. Oh yeah, we got these two new guys too. Holy crap. They look so weird. Wait, he's holding a pear and he's holding an apple. <laughs> what? what? What is going on? Are you guys supposed to be Mario and Luigi? <laughs> oh, I wish I could do Italian accent. Oh, because I would totally just do that. Um... Oh, are you guys drunk? Because they're kind of like... They, they're like blushing, almost like they're drunk. And then the way he's talking seems like he might be drunk. Hmm. Oh god. What voice? Name's Nash Skulkin. Occupation is, um, body. Professional body. Name's Ringo Skulkin. Occupation's, um... Same as him! Tobias Gregson, School and Yard Inspector. That's right, we're what they call. What the? What? Uh, Gregson can't be your brother? <laughs> what? The three Skulkin brothers! Expectantly, um, what? What are you looking at me like that for? Don't look me in with you lot. Cool, blimey, that's cold. Don't you know what we're going for? What we're going through? Oh, going through? It's all right above. Lost contact with them, we are. They was going every shady corner of the capital. Oh, so there's a third one who's even taller. <laughs> and then last night we come across you, the very spit of the bloke. Ain't that right, Ringo? He is now. She is the very spit of him. So we decided there and then what we was gonna do. We was gonna call you. What? Big bro Skoki. They are weird. They are so weird. Like, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Come on, leave it out, you two. Sulky? Okay. Sulky Skulkin, and that's before he's run out of chips. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he is pretty sulky. <laughs> well then, Inspector Sulky Gregson. Begging your pardon, my lord, but the name's Tobias. What I would like to know, Inspector, is what you are doing in the witness stand. The Skulkin brothers are currently under arrest, my lord, on suspicion of theft. And they freaking shot Sherlock, okay? Hmm. <laughs> Thieves, are they, these three? No, my lord. Begging your pardon, but please don't lock me in with this lot. Two nights ago, these two brothers illegally entered an establishment with intent to burgle. And in the course of their nefarious activities, they became embroiled in a far more sinister crime. By Jove, you mean to say 
What an extraordinary coincidence. Indeed, my lord. While attempting to burglarize the pawnbrokery, they witnessed its proprietor's murder. Hmm. So they got Ringo on a <laughs> on a box. Order, order! The various trespasses of these brothers is not the subject of today's proceedings. Though they will naturally face trial in the very near future. With your lordship's permission, I'd like to remain in the stand to keep these gents on the straight and narrow. Of course, Inspector. Skeptical as I am about the caliber of the, these witnesses, I will permit them to take the stand. Mr. and Mr. Skulkin, you will now testify before the court. Describe the events of the night in question, and what exactly you saw. Happy to! Because a skulkin's never skulkin. Sure. Whatever. I don't know. I'm not really happy with the voice for the big brother. The taller one, I should say. Get out of it. He's like, leave me alone. <laughs> this is weird. Okay, legal entry. Um... I was giving him a deep voice, but then I'm also doing Gregson a deep voice, so I'm not really happy with it. What else could I do for you? Let's see. Uh, maybe if I try to talk like he's from uh, from Brooklyn or something. I don't know. Dang nabbit. I need to improve my accents. We was walking like that. You know, like, hey, we're walking here. <laughs> you know? Like they're from Jersey or something. Ah, oh, all right. Let's let's see. We was walking down Baker Street in the small hours, and the gas door was ajar. See? Yeah, that's better. Why not? Why not? That's more fun. It was like some kind of sign, begging for us to go in. It was. But once we got inside, cold, blimey, lummy, we had a gunshot from the back room. We went to see what was what, but the door was locked from the inside. We was we never done nothing, governor. We never took nothing. We just left after that nice and quiet. Aha. Uh -huh. No, you shot Sherlock. Stop lying. Ah, terrible coincidence it would seem. At the precise moment these miscreants entered the property. An even more sinister crime was afoot. The witness's testimony is consistent with the crime scene in every detail. The door providing access to the storeroom from the main shop was indeed locked from the inside. And within, only the victim and the accused were found. Hmm, was there another entry? Uh, that's what I'm curious about. <sighs> I must say, it does appear to be an overwhelmingly simple case. Still, the defense may cross-examine the witnesses now, of course. Counsel, if you please. Counsel? Uh, um, yes. What's the matter, Bruno? Sorry, I... I was just stunned into silence for a minute by the blatant lies being told by that pair in the stand. <laughs> oh, bro, I tell you, it's, uh, <clears throat> it's not the first time you're gonna come up against people who just lie like that. I know, th I know that it's all nonsense because I saw it with my own eyes. I'll just have to expose their testimony for the pack of lies it is. All right. Now that I've settled on voices for them, I feel better. All right. We was walking down Baker Street in the small hours, and the guv's door was ajar, see? 
All right, we're gonna press you, you liar. Hold it! The front door of Windebanks was ajar, you say? What time of night was this? Must have been about one, right, Ringo? Yeah, I'd say so. Right, Silky? How would I know? The place would have been shot at one in the morning, just like every other shop in town. Well, it was pitch black inside, it's true. Ain't that right, Ringo? I'm not so sure, Nash. I seem to remember a little light burning inside. What about you, Soki, me old mucker? Leave me alone. <laughs> oh my god. There definitely was a small lamp burning inside. That's what alerted us to the situation in the first place. And when these gentlemen ventured into the open establishment, the accused, Miss Gina Lestrade, already had the muzzle of her gun trained on the unfortunate victim. Objection. That is pure conjecture. Hmm. Huh. Perhaps. But it changes nothing. These brothers inadvertently wandered into the middle of a cold-blooded murder simply because they found the door of the victim's establishment open and ventured inside. Right, that's what happened. Ah. Uh -huh. All right. It was like some kind of sign begging for us to go in. It was. What are you trying to suggest? That you had to go in? Well, God moves in mysterious ways, they say, don't they, Ringo? They do, Nash, they do. Must have been some sort of providence, I reckon. God's will often presents itself as, as itself as the whim of thieves, does it? It won't no whim, I'm dead sure of that. It won't, Nash, it won't, like we said at the time. Yeah, you don't just find doors open in the middle of the night like that. Nah, there's no two ways about it. It was a sign that our long lost brother was inside. They're not very good liars, are they? Well, you can't deny it. He led us to a bloke who looks just like our bruv. I said cut it out. <laughs> those chimps, those chips are getting a chomping today. He's pretty aggravated. Oh god, dramatic. But once we got inside, call blimey lubby, we heard a gunshot from the back room. A gunshot, you say? Just the one. Are you sure about that? Yep, just the one, Govda. I can swear to that. It was, now she was. Ain't that right, bruv? The firearm used belonged to the victim himself. Yes, Mr. Winterbank always used to leave his gun lying around in a counter. Quite, uh, careless of him. <laughs> right, I remember. When we examined it, we found the revolver was completely out of rounds. That makes sense. Mr. Winterbank always used to say he only ever kept a single bullet loaded. That's true, I remember him saying that as well. So we can say with considerable certainty that only a single round was discharged from the firearm used as the murder weapon. Yes, my lord, we can. And I shall remind the court that the firearm in question was discovered in the hand of the accused. <sighs> Wonderful. Okay. 
We went to see what was what, but the door was locked from the inside. Hold it! Do you mean the door between the main shop and the storeroom? If my learned friend is having difficulty grasping the situation, perhaps a drawing would help. Excluding the shop's entrance from the street, there is only one other door, that of the storeroom. Of course there was only a little oil lamp burning, not much to see by. And the door was hidden behind the curtain and all. That's right. When we arrived, the door was mostly obscured by the curtain. Tell me, why exactly did you try to open that door? Huh? Any normal petty thief would run at the sound of a gunshot, I should think. Yes! Oh, well, um, you turn to your rabbit, Ringo. Or oh, your turn to rabbit, Ringo. Um, yeah. I well, suppose you'd have to say we ain't normal, eh? Broadly speaking, humans respond in one of two ways on hearing a gunshot or scream. The timid flee, gripped by fear, will the courageous investigate to see if they might help. These gentlemen are of the latter inclination. My learned Nipponese friend, it would seem, is of the former. Wow. Alright, somehow I just proved that I was a coward that night. Sure. Thank you, Councils. So I believe you all understand that the door was locked and could not be opened. Proceed, witnesses. We never done nothing, Governor. We never took nothing. We just left after that, nice and quiet. Uh huh. I kind of. Hmm. Let me press. Hold it. You didn't do or take anything. Is that your story? Well, it was bedlam soon as, wasn't it? It was, Nash, it was. Didn't even have time to pull me dukes out of me, lo me Lucy Lockets. What? So with no time to take your hands out of your pockets, thank you for translating. <laughs> you just left nice and quietly, you say? That's right, Governor. Nothing we ain't more than violence. Peace, love, and nibblers we are, not bludgers. We are, Nash, we are. Never even pulled me dukes off me Lucy Lockets. So you'd clearly like us to believe. Eh? Come again? As you fled from the pawnbrokers that night, did you not run into anyone else? Um. And did you not fire a gun at that person? Um. Saints alive, they fired a gun, you say? <laughs> what the? Blimey, Kovnar! You ain't telling us it was you in the doorway? It was. Why the bleeding Nora? <laughs> Did you mention that before? You were armed with a gun. And as you fled the scene, you fired that gun at London's greatest detective, Sherlock Holmes. Who shot the great Sherlock Holmes? I did hear that, actually. There was a rumor he'd been rushed to a hospital. The great Holmes? That's beyond the pale. On the night in question, his pair were arrested by the police within minutes of the discovery of the crime scene. Their suspicious countenance rapidly gave them away. 
and then searched. A firearm was indeed found in their possession. Why do you have them as your freaking witnesses? This is shady as hell. Come on, man. Furthermore, the barrel shows signs of a shot having been fired from it. Like, what the frick? The prosecution invites his lordship to examine the firearm recovered from these brothers. But you were gonna stay quiet up until now, huh? Yes, indeed. Remnants of powder are on the muzzle, as you say, counsel. The court will hold this weapon as evidence. There are signs that a single round was fired. Hmm. This is... no. Something's up. Now, my learned Nipponese friend. Uh, yes? Here's to you successfully presenting the evidence. No. This feels like a trap. Uh. For years, there are the telltale signs of spent powder on this gun. And a single bullet missing from the cylinder. But the prosecution demands evidence that it was fired at the scene of the crime under scrutiny in this trial. Objection! Oh, come on! Well, I don't need evidence. Because I was there. Objection! However, the rest of us in this courtroom were not. Oh, come on! Okay, okay, hold on. Hold on. Uh... So, there's ammunition still loaded in five of this re revolver's six cylinders. Yes, which tells us that only a single shot has been fired from it. Exactly. The bullet that hit Shirley is in fact, isn't it? Yes, it happened almost as soon as we'd walked in through Windabank's door. Aww. I'll make those brothers pay. Oh. Okay. Is there anything else that we need? Mm. I was just wondering if there was another... No, I don't think so. There's nothing else unique about it. Um, what about... Shows the positions. Hmm. I'm thinking about that. My thing... Here's my thing, you guys. We have a bullet that hit this, right? And looking at the angle of it, I was thinking this has to be, you know, the one that shot Sherlock. And the blood is, you know, it went through him and his blood splattered there. So, clearly from the angle, you know, whoever shot Sherlock, which is these two guys, were further in the shop and they turned when they walked in and they shot them, right? So I'm just trying to figure out how... I guess... I don't know. I'm trying to see how, how I'm going to go about this. Okay. If the defense fails to provide evidence in support of its rash claim, we shall have no choice but to toast your incompetence and move on. Evidence that these two fired that gun before they left Windabanks that night. The court demands that all claims are affirmed with clear proof. What evidence shows that these witnesses unloaded a firearm in the pawnbroker's shop that night? Okay, I'm thinking it's probably what I just looked at, right? I mean... I'm trying to think of what else it could possibly be. Rubber. Paper. 
Because the gun... The gun is not going to help. Um... has to be this, right? It just has to be. Take that! The evidence is in this portfolio. All right. What what on earth have you there, counsel? During the course of our investigations, we discovered a number of bloodstains. Not trusting the police to do their job they're trained to do. How arrogantly Nipponese of you. W well, anyway... Shut up. <laughs> we analyzed all the blood samples we found and recorded the results in this portfolio. And you claim to have the evidence the court is demanding therein? Yes, my lord. No more dallying then, counsel. Present the pertinent evidence at once. What do you have in your portfolio that proves these witnesses unloaded a firearm at the scene? Yeah, this one right here. What is that? Explain. It's a photographic print taken at Windebank's pawn brokery on the day of the incident. From the scene of the crime, is it? Is... is that... a bullet hole? And if my eyes do not deceive me, it appears the bullet is still lodged there. Yes. Yes, as your lordship noticed. The bullet pierced Mr. Windebank's calendar. The date sh shown being the 16th of April, the very day of the pawnbroker's death. The incident occurred at one hour after midnight, but this indicates that a separate shot had been fired sometime after the calendar had been set to the 16th. That's right, and while it isn't irrefutable, the defense believes that this is credible evidence that the witnesses did fire a round from their gun in the pawnbrokers that night. Nah! <laughs> They're so weird. Order! How does the prosecution stand, Lord Von Zeeks? Uh oh. Is he angry? Is he going to throw the chalice? If that is the direction my learned friend wishes to take, the prosecution has no objection. What? There! <laughs> I knew it! But you'll forgive me for flinging my hollow chalice aside in disgust at the repugnancy it exposes. Yes, on the night in question, these brothers entered the prawn brokery illegally. And like the bold baddies they claim to be, opened fire on the new arrivals before fleeing back onto the street. Don't you see how contradictory this is, sir? You're admitting that everything I'm saying is the truth, but then it's just... Shit, it's just ruining the credibility of your witnesses that you have up there. Take it easy there, Governor. You're gonna land us in the soup. We had a deal. You weren't gonna get into them details. Uh huh. Tell them, Soki. Set the bloke straight. I have nothing to add. So he knew, did he? Van Zeeks knew their testimony would almost certainly expose the extent of their crimes. It would seem now that I owe my learned Nipponese friend a word of gratitude. What do you mean? 
What I mean is that you have helpfully confirmed an important fact. To what fact do you refer, Lord Von Zeeks? As has been established, at the point of their arrest, a single shot had been fired from the brother's gun. So now he's going to say, you can't argue that these guys killed Mr. Windebank because you're saying that they used their one shot to shoot Sherlock, which is true. Unfortunately, they did not do the murder. So, yeah, I know. However, if that shot found its target in Mr. Holmes, then clearly these witnesses cannot be accused of the fatal shooting of the proprietor and victim. Ugh. In other words, these two men have no material connection to the murder of Mr. Vindabank at all. Ugh, so that's it. But they might still know something. Come on, man. Let me at least get some more information out of them. <laughs> They're trying to... They, they failed. LOL. <laughs> Their faces are pretty funny, though. Oh. That's it. We didn't have nothing to do with it. We did it, Nash. We did it. That's what I reckon. Your crimes include unlawful entry, intent to steal, perjury, and, let us not forget, attempted murder. What a catalog, eh, fellas? Ah! We're in for it now, bro! Now then, let us take a moment to consider the aforementioned great detective, Mr. Sherlock Holmes. It would seem the man patronized the pawnbrokers in question somewhat regularly. Where is he going with this? Mr. Holmes appears to take pleasure in tinkering with eccentric machinery. Eccentric? Says who? Not me. Don't give me that look. <laughs> He installed a pair of machines like this one in the victim's shop. Ah, I was wondering when that was going to come into play. Oh, that's one of Charlie's red-handed recorder. What is that, Council? It has the appearance of a photographic contraption. As your lordship has surmised, it is indeed a camera attached to a small timing device. Every half an hour, it automatically photographs the interior of the establishment. The idea being that if a thief were to break into the shop, he would be caught red-handed. Hmm... The prosecution has obtained the photographs taken by the device on the night in question. Okay. 8.30... Nine... Nine thirty... As the court will observe, copious identical prints are produced in a quite desultory fashion. <laughs> Rather prodigal, I feel. In fact, there are two such devices in the victim's shop, my lord. Okay. Let's look at the angles, then. If I may refer the court to the plan of the premises, their respective positions are here and here. Oh, okay. Interesting. Not the best angles, but do what you gotta do. You say these cameras produce a print every half hour. I'm afraid I fail to see... How that would help if the anticipated thief conducted his activities in one of the many 30-minute intervals. Gosh, I'm getting war flashbacks to Danganronpa V3 about camera intervals. <laughs> oh, Lord. One can only pray that the would-be criminal lingers, my lord. 
Ah. On the night in question, the witnesses currently in the stand were not caught on camera. So they weren't even there long enough. Okay. <laughs> That's a bit of fire tuck, eh, bro? Lady Luck loves a skulking. Shut up. Witnesses, at what time did your trespassing begin? Eh? Must have been just after one. Right, bruv? Must have been, Nash. Must have been. Yeah, just gone one. In which case, minutes before these brothers entered the establishment. What scene might we expect to see within the shop? Let us examine the evidence. Oh no! Gina! Ah. Dagnab it, Gina. Why? This is probably her forcing him to let her go into the back room. Oh, Gina, no. Good lord! It's... It's the defendant, Miss Gina Lestrade. Dang, nabbit, Gina, that looks really bad. As the court can clearly see. The accused is pictured, gun in hand, facing the victim over the shop counter. Damn, that sucks. No doubt coercing the proprietor to open the door to his storeroom. Quiet. One can only too easily imagine the events that unfolded. The court will take this photographic print as evidence, if you please, counsel. But there's still so much that doesn't make sense. Like, okay, let's say she forced him to let her in there. And then what, she just shot him? in the back and then what fainted and just stayed there in the locked room instead of running away like so much of it just doesn't make sense you guys even if she wanted to steal what is her motive for killing the man you know ah <sighs> y'all don't have common sense Ugh. i i can't believe it jimmy in short the accused is the only person who could possibly have killed Mr. Winterbank. Ah, oh, Damn. That's bad. Who's this? I say, my lord. Oh. Oh? Well. I am curious now what you have to say. But okay, let's um, leave this episode right here. I think we've gone far enough. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying this. I I hope the, the voices I'm giving the brothers is fine. Because honestly, I can't... I don't know. I was trying to do one thing and I was like, no, I don't like... I don't know. But anyway... Oh, this case already is going like, ooh, oh boy. <laughs> but I'm enjoying it. So thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, hope you have a nice day. Bye!